back to the Essentials Club, I'm Maddie, and today I am so excited to take you through this tutorial. I've been dreaming up this piece for a while now, and I cannot wait to bring it to life and show you through the steps of how to make it for yourself. So what it is, is it's going to be a really cute jumpsuit with a shared section, some puff sleeves, and then just like some gathered shorts at the bottom. So you'll just need the following to make your own. We need some elastic for the waistband, some fabric scissors, some general pins as well as a safety pin, some matching thread to your fabric as well as a bobbin for that, fabric chalk, measuring tape, some shirring thread, which is essentially just an elastic thread, and obviously a bobbin for that as well. We'll also need a pair of pants to reference for when we're cutting out the pattern for the crotch section of the pants. And then obviously we need some fabric to make the garment out of. I would suggest something that isn't too stiff, which is nice and light, something like a linen or a cotton. I got this beautiful recycled cotton from Wildcraft. I'll link her below. She has this naturally dyed range. I went for the olive tone and I'm so excited to make a jumpsuit out of it. So let's get stuck into the steps. This jumpsuit or cord set is actually a bit of a process, so make sure that you set aside at least a day or two to get through this so that you don't stress yourself out. We're going to split this into two stages and focus on the top and then the bottom and then essentially join them together to make the jumpsuit. First up, we're going to focus on the top. So to begin this, we need to find the measurements of the two panels that will be sitting on the front and the back. So at this stage, it'd be good to grab your phone or a notepad and write down these measurements so you can reference them when it comes time to cutting. We're going to grab our measuring tape and find our full bust measurement. So what that is, is grabbing this and wrapping it all the way around and finding this measurement normally where our bra would go. Make sure when you're doing this, you're not pulling it too tight or having it too loose. It's just going to be that perfect amount where you can kind of shuffle it around. So for me, that's 35 inches. So whatever the measurement was that you found, now add 12 inches to that. For me, that's going to be 47. And the reason that we've added 12 inches is that allows us to have two inches for seam allowance and then an extra 10 inches added. So when we add the shirring in there, it can have that gathered effect to it. Great, so now that we've got that full length, we then go and halve it, and that is the cutting width for one panel. So to repeat that, we find our full bust measurement, we add 12 inches, and then we halve that to find our cutting width. A good way to do that is just fold your measuring tape in half, and for me, that ends up being 23 and a half inches. Write that down as the cutting width for the main panels. Next, we're gonna find the height of the panel. So what we do is we grab the measuring tape again and just place it around our mid chest or wherever we want the panel to stop at the top. Then from there, we're gonna measure down to our waist or our belly button area as that's where the shorts are gonna meet the top. Make sure that when you do this, you have a nice straight posture because if you bend down, it might end up being too short. So for me, that ends up being nine inches. So again, we're gonna add two inches for seam allowance. So for me, that is 11 inches. And I'm just gonna write that down again and that is the cutting height of our panel. Now we have the cutting width and the height of the panel, we're going to find the straps. So technically they're not gonna be straps, but it's gonna be a section that goes around that we then add the sleeve onto. So again, we find that line where it's about mid chest or wherever you figured out you wanted the top of the jumpsuit to stop. And we're gonna start the measuring tape there. And then we're gonna to turn to our side and pull this all the way over until the point of where it kind of is mirrored on the backside. You might need someone to help you out in this section or you can just figure it out. So for me that ends up feeling about there. And just to be safe we're going to add 3 inches because it's always easier to take off than it is to add more length. So for me that ends up being 19 inches. So again we're measuring from mid chest to around the back same area and we're adding three inches and that will be the length of our strap area. Then for our width, I'm gonna make it about an inch wide. So we're going to double that for two inches and then add an inch for seam allowance. So the cutting width ends up being three inches. I've gone with one inch as the final amount as I think that'll look as nice as a thick strap there. If you want this section to be thinner or wider, you would just have to find that measurement double it because we're going to fold it in half and then add an inch for seam allowance. So those are the main measurements we need for now to get started. We're going to grab our fabric chalk and our fabric scissors and also the piece of paper or our phone that we wrote down the measurements on. And I would suggest when you lay out the fabric, start measuring and cutting from one corner and working your way across. That way we're being nice and resourceful and not wasting too much fabric. So for the width of one panel, mine ended up being 23 inches. If you need a refresh of how we got this measurement, you can go back to where we found this out. I'm just going to put a mark at 23 inches for a little bit along here. The next mark we're going to put down is the height that we figured. So that was the height plus the two inches for seam allowance. And for me, that ended up being 11. 
So I'm just going to put a mark along here and find that kind of corner where the 23 inches align and that will end up being my rectangle. And obviously if you have wonky edges, you can start measuring in from that and just draw a whole rectangle and make sure you cut off those. Otherwise mine are looking pretty straight so I'm just going to start measuring straight from the edges. It means there's less waste. And then I'm just going to replicate this next one and use that as a template to cut out the second one. And then we jump into cutting out the straps. Super simple, so I've got those two ready and now I'm just going to grab the measurements for the straps and just cut out the two rectangles for that. Now that we've got these panels all cut out, we're going to do some simple sewing. So first we're going to grab the two main panels that would be our top body part. The benefits of using something like a cotton or a linen without a pattern is that both sides are generally the same, so that's nice. But if you do happen to have something that has a clear good side, make sure that you lay the two of them with the good sides facing and the bad sides facing outwards. So what we're going to do first up is just sew down one side seam and then down the other side seam and leave the tops all open. If you want, you can obviously pin this in place before you sew, but I'm just going to go for it. Throughout this process, I'm actually using a white thread for most of it, just so you can see where I am sewing. Obviously, if you have a matching thread, you should use that, but I thought that might help you see where I'm sewing. So I'm just going to sew these in place with about a half an inch seam. Then next we're going to focus on the straps and for this again if you have a good and a bad side this is where you need to have this in mind we're going to fold it with the good sides facing outwards i know that's a bit different than usual but trust me it'll make sense later i'm just going to sew as close as we can to that raw edge and then repeat that for the other side Next we're just going to hem the top of this panel in preparation for the sharing section. So figure out which part you want to be the top and then just do a nice double fold for the hem. I'd say about one quarter of an inch and then do that again and then just pin that all the way around and then we'll sew it in place as a nice clean top hem. Now that the top hem is all complete we are moving on to sharing. So we need to get the machine set up and ready for this. I'm going to switch my top fabric to the matching thread. Yours is probably already like that, so there's no need to change that. But we're going to swap out the bobbin to the shirring thread. Like a normal bobbin, we need to add it on here, except we're not going to use the machine. We need to actually hand thread it around. And why we do that is because we need to make sure we do not stretch it. So we want it to be put on there as it is, not stretched out, so that as we sew, it begins to stretch. So what we do for that is we grab our shirring thread and we get ready to put that onto the actual bobbin. So what I like to do is poke the thread through one of those holes grab a hold of it and then just start wrapping it around the bobbin and just again to reiterate this make sure you do not stretch the thread as you're adding it on just wrap it around and make sure you don't pull or give it any tension and do that until it is pretty much all full and then we just pop it into the machine as normal now that the machine is all set up and ready to go for sharing we just need to make sure that, that we switch the length of the stitch to a higher distance. So for me, that's just turning my panel to a higher number. And what that means is that the length of the stitch, so the amount that the needle jumps each time it does a stitch, is at its highest point. And apparently that helps it with gathering. But essentially we need to make sure that the good sides are facing out. We pop it under the machine ready to sew just like normal. I'm going to do my first line of sharing about a centimetre from the top just as the first one never ends up being as bunched as the others so then the more that we do it the more that it will bunch up and then I just do one line all the way around back to where I started. So that is line number one done and don't be disheartened if you do this for the first time and nothing really happens because generally the first one it never shows much of an effect. From here you can either grab your measuring chalk or just use the distance on your machine and mark out a spot from half an inch to an inch distance apart. The more you have, the more gathered and like that layered effect it will look, the more spread out it is, probably the less gathered effect you have. So it's up to you and what you personally prefer. But for me, I'm gonna about go about half an inch and just repeat that until I get to the very bottom. The reason why we sew it with the good sides facing out, it just obviously ends up getting a bit messy and that's a thicker thread, so it's good to hide that all underneath and then have your nice matching clean thread on top. I'm just going to keep sewing those lines and I'll show you as the bunching effect starts to happen. As you're sewing along, make sure that you pull the fabric nice and tight so the more lines that we do, the more gathered it's going to get and we want to be sewing over the nice flat surface. Another thing to note is that the bobbin may run out of sharing thread as you're going through so you might need to re-thread that a few times but that's fine, that's quite normal. 
So just keep going ahead until you get to the bottom. I love how sharing turns out, but gosh, it does take a little while. I did about 10 plus rows there and that took me about half an hour just doing the rows and always having to re-thread the bobbin when need be. So next we are going to focus back on the straps and attaching them onto here ready to add the sleeves. One thing before we do that though, try this on, make sure it fits around here well and also because this is a jumpsuit we will be pulling this over our waist and up to our chest so just make sure you can do that action. If you can't, maybe you might need to keep it separate as a pants and a top, but we can figure that out when we get to that stage. If you try it on and it is way too large, all you'll have to do is just flip it inside out and just take in those side seams by a little bit more so it's nice and tight for you. Next, we're gonna grab our measuring tape and figure out how far apart we want the straps to sit. So obviously if you have a bra on, you can use those straps as a reference. Otherwise, we'll just figure it out by eye. So the points that we're measuring are the insides of the strap. So say if this was over my shoulder, we're going to be measuring from the inside of there and how far we want it to be apart. For me, I want that to be nine inches. The reason being, if I go eight inches, I think it would be too far in and it will just look too cramped and it means the sleeves will start over too far. If I go 10, same thing, the straps will probably be over and they might fall off as I wear them. So nine seems to be that point where it'll have a nice open chest area It'll sit over my shoulders and not fall off. And I'm happy to go with that. Once you've found your measurement, we're going to find the center of this top. So a way that we could do that is fold it in half, or we could measure it and just find the center point. For me, I'm just gonna fold it as it's quite stretchy at the moment and stretch it out. And then because I've folded it in half, all I need to do is find 4.5 inches from the center and mark it out. And when I unwrap it, they'll be at nine inches apart. So do the same thing for you, fold it in half, find that center point and measure out half of your amount. Make sure that when you find this point that you're stretching out the shirt area and measuring it on the flat. So for me, I'm just gonna put a pin at the 4.5 mark there and then just repeat it on the other side. And these raw edges that we've left, I'm just gonna clean it up. So that could be doing a zigzag on the edge of your machine or using an overlocker and just overlocking the edge. So let's do that on both the straps and get them all ready to attach. So this raw edge, we want it to be on the outer side of when we attach it. We're gonna tuck them in on the inside, aligning with that pin that we've put in place and just pin them in at that top hem section. Make sure when you flip it over that the strap is nice and straight, that there's no twist in it because that would be very annoying to sew it in place like that. And then we'll do one last try on just to make sure that the fit over the shoulders is how we want it and it's a good distance apart and then we can make any changes from there. When I tried it on, I had to pull the straps in just a little bit tighter so that meant just unpinning it and pulling it through so that it sat on my shoulders more securely. So now that I've repinned it in place, all I'm going to do is just sew a straight line over those sections where the straps are and that will be all nice and secure in place. The next thing we need to do is we need to grab our pen and paper or a phone again to write down some more measurements as we're gonna figure out the size of our sleeves. And we're gonna find two measurements. The first one being from our shoulder. So just to be safe, we'll just like put it on the shoulder part. You can always take away if you can't always add more if you don't have enough. And then we're just gonna measure down to where we want it. So personally, I want mine to go kind of to my elbow and then when we have it gathered, I'll push it up a little bit. From the top of my shoulder down to my elbow area is 14 inches and then I'm going to add four inches and that's allowing an inch seam allowance up here and then three inches down here so we're going to add an elastic finish so again from your shoulder down to where you want it to finish and then add four inches so for me that's 18 inches then the next measurement we need is to figure out how much space is around here that we'll be attaching the sleeve onto fold it out so that you're focusing on one sleeve area Kind of looks like a little handbag when you do that and then stretch out the sharing section so you're measuring from one strap to the other this is on a matching one you might have to do it in sections if that's easier so that part was 12.5 and then i'm just going to keep going around that strap just keep going and going this is the benefit of having like a soft measuring tape because you can just keep pulling it around so that ends up being 30 inches. So again, that was that shirt section that's under there and then going all the way around the strap. From there, we're going to times that measurement by 1.25. And why we're doing that is because we're gonna gather it up and have it as a really oversized sleeve. 
So for me, obviously 30 inches, 1.25 times that equals 37.5. So that's going to be my cutting width. So we're just going to do the same thing where we mark out the spots for the rectangle, our sleeve length and our sleeve width, cut it out, use that as a template, and then we've got our sleeves ready to go. So make sure that you keep your measurements in mind as to which end is what so that you don't get confused. So this longer length for me is the section that we measured all the way around our arm. So once you've figured out which edge of that is yours, we're then going to fold it over with the good sides facing along that side. So we end up getting that. We can either then pin it in place down the side or just jump straight into sewing. But essentially we're just going to sew one straight line down that side edge. Put that one aside and then just repeat it for the other one. We're then going to pick which one we want to be the top that sits up here and the bottom that sits down there because the top section we're going to sew one line all the way around it. So for me that's going to be this end and I'm just going to switch my machine to a longer length so every stitch ends up being longer and about half an inch from the edge I'm just going to do one loop all the way around but I'm not going to back stitch at the beginning or the end because I'm going to use this section together. Simply put sew one line around the top and do not back stitch at the beginning or the end. Then repeat that for the second one. Once we've sewn around that top edge we're just going to focus on the two threads of where we either started or finish and then just grab one of them and start pulling on it lightly. Make sure you don't pull too tightly otherwise it'll snap and then we'll have to do it all again. So really gently just start pulling the fabric along the thread and it will start to gather. Again just be super gentle and just like start at this end and then kind of spread it out across there. And we're just going to keep doing that until we get it down to the measurement of the section that we'll be adding it onto the top. So you might want to keep a measure tape handy and just lay it out next to it. So for me, my final measurement of that was 30 inches. So obviously this is on the fold. I need to get this down to half of that. I know that I've got that down to 15 inches. So I've got my pins at the ready. I have left the sleeve with the bad side facing out. And I'm now going to align it with this. Leave this good side facing out. I'm going to slip it in through the sleeve and start aligning it this way. So that way the good sides of the sleeve and the garment are facing. So once that's all nice and neat in there, we'll focus on one sleeve section. And this middle seam that we sewed align with the middle seam of the garment, of this underarm section here. Once that is aligned there, I'm just gonna pin that in place. And then I'm going to spread it across over to the sleeve and just pin between there. And then I'm going to keep kind of turning it around this corner, even pin it on that corner. And just keep pinning it honestly all the way around until we reach the other end. If there does happen to be a shortage or too much, that's where we can use the benefit of the gathering to adjust it to make sure that it fits this space that it's designated for. So this is not the normal way that you would do a sleeve and probably there's much neater ways but this is just what made sense to me. I'm just showing you a simple guide of some ways that you possibly could make this jumpsuit. So I've got back around to the point where I started and I've actually got quite a bit of excess sleeve so I'm just going to push that and gather it up until it ends up fitting on there properly. Perfect so after a bit of reshuffling around I ended up making that all match and it looks a bit weird like this but the benefit of pinning it is that we can kind of see it in action so I'm going to fold it outwards just so you can visualize where we're going with this so it might look a little bit strange with the pins not being perfectly in place but that's what the sleeves kind of end up looking like on one side so I'm going to sew that in place and then repeat it again on the other side Make sure that when you are sewing, you're sewing on the outer side of the line that we've sewn where we've gathered it. That way it gets all hidden in the seams and you don't see it. Just a little side note. Also, if you're not familiar with turning corners when you're stitching, I'll show you how to do that. So you just sew it up to the corner. We spin this side handle that maneuvers the needle in and out. And then we leave it in the fabric. We lift the foot up and then we turn it and then we put the foot back down. And that's how we turn a corner. Nice and simple. That's looking so cute. Right, it's time to repeat it for the other side. The next and final step for this top section is we're going to bring in the bottom of these sleeves. So we'll grab the extra elastic that we have 
then we're just going to wrap it around our arm where it's going to sit and by doing this make sure you've got at least like quite a bit of move room and you're not pulling it so it's tight it's just sitting there and has probably like a good gap there where you can move it around once you've found that point add two more inches and then we'll cut it there and that will be enough for seam allowance once you've got that one piece cut out just grab the rest of the elastic and replicate that to get a second Next we're going to prep the sleeves and make a bit of a tunnel for the elastic to go into so let's turn them inside out. Fold them once just really like a quarter of an inch really small all the way around and do one hem. Now we're just going to do one more folded over hem but this time we need to make sure that it's wide enough to fit the elastic in. So one way to do that is just fold it over, place the elastic over the top and just make sure there's enough space for you to sew in from the edge and have a tunnel for this to go through. So once that's pinned in place and you're ready to sew, just make sure that you keep in mind we need to leave a hole for the elastic to be able to enter in. So wherever you start sewing, just make sure you stop about two inches away from there, and that means that can be the access for the elastic. Now that we've finished sewing that hem in place, I'm going to grab the elastic, pop a safety pin on one end, and also just pin this end onto the fabric so we don't accidentally pull it through. And then we just enter it through that hole that we left open and just keep bunching up and pushing it around as we go until it comes back out the other end that we entered it. So now that that's out the other end, I've pulled all the pins off and I'm just going to overlap it by that inch that I added onto it and sew that in place so it stays together. For this, I'm just going to switch it back to the zigzag stitch and do a smaller stitch and then just do a few zigzags back and forth so that keeps it nice and secure. And then you just pull it like so and that will push it back through and then we'll just switch it back to the normal stitch close up that section that we left open flip that so the good sides are facing out and that my friends is one sleeve done we'll just repeat that step on the other one and then it's time for making the pants <laughs> side note obviously if you want to stop there you can and just make the top it's such a cute piece just like that otherwise you can move forward and make it a full jumpsuit or even a co-ord where you keep the shorts and the top separate so you can have two garments out of this so this is where we need to lay out our fabric and then grab the pair of pants that we originally had that we're going to reference for the pattern we'll turn these pants inside out and then fold them in half so we're just focusing on one side so this might be the front or the back whatever one you end up on first and we're just gonna lay that on top of our fabric and then use that to trace around. Obviously, this is where you need to note the fit of this and how we want the pants to fit. We want these to be quite an oversized style so that we can bunch them in and they kind of flare out. If this is a tight fit pant that you're working from, be sure to add an extra inch or two seam allowance to get it to that oversized fit. And again, we want it to be high-waisted, so if this is like a low-rise pant that you're referencing, be sure to pop it on, figure out how much you need to add to get it to your high waist and then obviously add the seam allowance on from there. We're then going to grab our measuring tape and add whatever amounts we need to, to each side to make sure that it fits on that oversized style. I'm lucky that these are already an oversized high waisted fit but say if it tapered in and it was tight at the waist just make sure to add that little bit there because we want that to be nice and oversized at the hips so it can just draw straight over our hips. So for me I'm going to add about an inch and a half just to each side and then I'm going to add three inches on the top and that means I'll have enough room for this elastic to fit in there. Obviously if you're using a thicker elastic and you need to allow more room for that go for it. Now it's just time to trace these pants and then we'll get to the cutting out stage. So once that's all marked out, we can remove the pants and then just cut around the line that we've traced. So now that we've got that first piece cut out, we're actually going to use this as the template to cut the second. Make sure when you go to lay it out that you face the good sides of the fabric together. Again, my fabric doesn't really have a good and bad side, so it doesn't really matter. But if you had a pattern, make sure you lay it down with the good sides facing. And then that way when you go to sew it, it'll all be matching. I'm going to cut that out. Put those two aside and then repeat that process for the other side of the pants. Now that we've got all the four panels cut out for the shorts, so that's two front and two back, we're going to start sewing it together. And what we do for step one is we focus on this center seam here and we just pin it in place or just go straight into sewing and we just sew one line following that curve 
and then repeat that for the back side as well. Make sure as you're sewing these center seams together that the good sides of the fabric are facing. Now that we've got the front and the back side joined at the center seam, so we just grab one, unfold it so the good sides are now facing up, grab the other one, and we unfold that as well, and we get the good side of that, and make sure that they face each other. We'll then make sure it's all nice and lined up, pin it in place, and we're gonna sew down these two side seams and across this matching crotch area. And then our pants are almost finished. And now we should have a very oversized pair of pants ready to go. Next, we're gonna add the waistband in. Keep this inside out, and then we're going to just do one tiny hem. So this could be about a quarter of an inch or as small as you can get it. Just do one small fold, pin that in place, and then just sew that all around the top. And that'll get us ready for getting the waistband in. One of the final steps of getting the pants ready is we're going to make a tunnel for the elastic to go through. Fold this hem over so it's like an oversized one and then just pop your elastic over the top of it just to make sure that it is the right size and just move it until it is. You need at least enough space for this to easily thread through and also a seam allowance where you will be sewing. So whatever this is, I'd say probably double that for this fold and then just pin that in place and do that the whole way around. If you are making the full jumpsuit, make sure that you add another half an inch as well as that will be enough seam allowance for us to add the top and the bottom together. Now when it comes to sewing this in place, we're going to start at one point, go all the way around, and make sure that we stop about an inch from where we started. That way we have an access hole for the elastic to be able to thread through. We've now sewn that waistband in place and stopped with enough space for the elastic to go in. Now we need to figure out how long we want the elastic waist to be. So grab your elastic and wrap it around your waist area where it will be sitting. Make sure it's nice and tight so it has enough strength to hold up the pants, but it's also not too tight that you can't pull it over your legs and up as a pair of pants. If you have like a tighter elastic that doesn't stretch as much, maybe don't make it too tight so then it's uncomfortable. Once you find that, cut it and then we are ready to insert it into the waistband. So grab a safety pin and place it on one end of the elastic. Then we're just going to push that in through that hole that we've left open and then we just keep gathering it along and pushing it all the way around until we get back to where we started. Making sure that the end on the other side doesn't accidentally get pulled through and we lose it, so keep an eye on that. And if you're worried about that, maybe just pin it to a bit of the fabric and it won't get pulled through. If by any chance this is too fast for you to understand about the pants, I have another tutorial which goes into much more detail about each step. So I'll link that below as well if you need those extra bits of detail. Once you pull the elastic all the way through, overlap the extra sections of the elastic, switch your machine to a zigzag style and sew this together by doing a few back and forth zigzags. And then once you've got that all attached, pull it all the way through, even out the bunched up section and just make sure you close over that hem section that we left open for the elastic to enter through. And then what you should end up is a pair of pants like this. When you do that last try on, just make sure you mark out the length and how much you want to take up to hem on the bottom. You can also just do one line around the bottom and just leave it frayed if that's your style as well. And I've decided I'm actually gonna keep them as separates and just wear them as cohorts together. And then I have the ability to be able to wear this top with jeans and wear this pants with any other top. What that means for me is I'm just gonna hem the bottom of the pants and the top as normal and then wear them together. But if you do wanna end up making it into a full jumpsuit, what we need to do for that is we're gonna leave the shorts good side facing out and then we'll grab the top and turn it inside out. Then once we've got that, we're going to actually slip these shorts through the top and align this bottom section and the waistband section of the pants. So there ends up being quite a lot of fabric here and it might get a bit overwhelming. Because we are working with gathered sections, it's better to kind of do this in stages. So grab the two side seams of the pants and the top, align that, making sure that the elastic is out of the way and we don't accidentally sew that. And then we'll just pin that in place on that corner and we'll do the same on the other side. Grab the side seam of the pants and the side seam of the top and align them and just pin it across the top like you would normally sewing a seam. Pin that together. And then we're just gonna find the other sections by again stretching it out, finding this middle section that matches. Pin that in place and just keep stretching and pinning as you go. And if for some reason if one of them is out of whack, the beauty of this is that that's already gathered and that's the effect that we're going for. So if you need to, just gather it up and bunch it over one section and sew the seam as normal. So then when we flip that with the good sides facing out, 
it should end up looking like that, which is this one jumpsuit. And obviously you would sew that and that would end up being all nice and clean at the seam there. I'm just gonna hem the bottom of my top and my pants and make sure on yours that you go through and zigzag or overlook any frayed sections as we don't want this to start falling apart as we start washing it. But essentially that is how we make this cute jumpsuit or co set. I'll show you how mine looks styled together and separately. But if you did follow along in this tutorial, I hope it turned out well. Please tag me at The Essentials Club on Instagram as I always love seeing your outcomes and I'll see you in future tutorials.